Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can get our exploding AI to roam within our level. At the moment when we jump into our game and then start playing you are going to notice our spider bot is going to stand still until we run in front of it. By the end of this video it is going to be roaming around within the level when it cannot see the player and when it does see the player it's going to stop roaming and continue to chase it. So what you want to do is go ahead and open up your spider bomb blueprint class. This is where we're going to be writing our code to get it to roam. So bring the event graph up on your screen for this. Now the way we're going to write this code is essentially every few seconds we're going to do it, uh, we're going to tell it to run a check. This check is going to be whether or not they're already moving and the only reason why they're going to be moving already is going to be for our AI move to code if they've seen a player. So first things first, what we're going to need to do then is have a variable which is going to tell the engine whether or not our AI is active and moving. So create a new variable and we're going to give this the name AI active. And then with this, we are going to set our variable type to boolean if it isn't already. Go ahead and hit compile and make sure the default value is set to untrue because by default it's not going to be moving, it's not going to be doing anything at all when it loads up the game. Once we've done that, what we're going to do is find our begin node, uh, begin play node, move it up a little bit and write some code from here. So at the start of the game, we want to tell the engine to run a check to see whether or not it's moving. So do a branch check. With our condition, this is going to be our AI active. So get a reference to that and hook it up to your condition. And then if it isn't active, what we're going to do is tell it to use the AI move to function. And what this is going to allow us to do is essentially get a random point and then move to that point. So I'm going to show you exactly how we're doing this. So what you want to do is right click anywhere on your event graph and on your event graph and get the actor location. And with this, you're going to get a return value which is vector information which we can use for our destination. Now what we want to get is a random point within a reachable radius within the actor's location. So we're going to get it to move within 5000 units. So the way we're going to do this is drag out from return value and get random point in our reachable point in radius. So what this is going to do is take our nav data in mind if we're hooking it up and making sure it's going to a reachable point whereas uh, the other node is just going to get any random number. So with our radius, this is going to be set to 5000. You can always adjust this number later on, it's entirely up to you, but this for me is a pretty decent size. So our random location is going to go into our destination. The pawn for this AI move to is going to be self. So if you drag out from pawn, get a reference to self and chuck it in there. What we're going to do from now, just to make this code loop over a little bit, from all three of these pins, so on execution, on success and on fail, so on success, we are going to add a delay. And this delay is just going to be two seconds. On fail is also going to have that delay of 2 seconds and then also our execution node is going to have that delay of 2 seconds. Once that's done, what we're going to do is simply tell it to go back to the start. So essentially it's going to move the AI and then 2 seconds later it's going to get a new location and move it to that just to make it a little bit more random. Now what I'm not going to do is talk about things like roaming points, giving it patrol paths and that kind of stuff. I will be covering a, a lot of detail into behavior trees and that kind of stuff as part of an AI series and that's something which you can attach to your game. But for the simple functionality of this AI that I need, this is going to work perfectly fine. So this is all set up and this is all working. Now if the AI is active, we're going to tell it to do nothing. 
but at the moment there's no way of telling whether or not it is active. So if we scroll down to the bottom of our event graph from on C pawn, what we're going to do is once it's casted to the player before it does this AI move to, or after rather, we are going to tell it just before, sorry, just before we are going to tell it to set AI active to true. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to do it just before it starts moving. We want it to be true, so it's going to stop roaming and it's just going to carry on doing this. It's never going to go back to this state afterwards because it's already seen the player. It's just going to keep on moving and moving and moving. So let's go ahead and compile this and give it a go and see how it looks. So go ahead and hit play, jump into our game. You can see here our AI is running about going from random location to random location about every two seconds. So that's working. It's now just seen the character and as you can see it's going to keep on following me until I stop at which point it is going to give itself a couple of seconds and then blow up just like that. So that is our roaming for our spider enemy all set up and good to go. The next step and the next thing that I'm going to work on is telling it to damage the player when it explodes if it's within a radius. So the way that we're going to do this is open up our spider bomb blueprint again. We're going to go to our viewports this time. And we are going to add a component. This component is going to be a sphere collision. And this is essentially going to just be our explosion radius. So with this sphere collision, make this nice and big. And if the player is within about this radius, they're going to take damage. So what we've got to do with this, go to our event graph, and then with this sphere selected, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the details panel, and on begin overlap, we are going to do a couple of things. So other actor is going to be cast to third person character, and then with the sphere selected, we're also going to have on end overlap. So other actor, cast to third person character again. And what we need now is a variable telling the engine whether or not the player is within that radius. So begin overlap is when they go in, end overlap is when they leave it. So add a variable. And with this variable, we're going to give it the name player in radius. So when they begin, we are going to set player in radius to true, copy and paste that, and when they end overlap, it is going to be set to untrue. Go ahead and hit compile, and then what we can do with our explosive code, at the end here, where we are spawning an emitter at the location, what we're going to do right before we destroy the actor is run a quick check to see whether or not the player is in the radius. If it is true, we're going to tell it to take damage. And the way we're going to do this is with our third person character reference, we got all the way back at the beginning here, we are going to simply set health. And with this, we are going to set our health equal to float minus float and we are going to take away 25 from the health value. The original value, the A, needs to be that original value. So as third person character, get our health and put it in there. And then carry on to the destroy actor. For our false, if they're not in the radius, we still want it to explode anyway. So your code should look a little bit like this. So hopefully you guys aren't getting too lost with all the blueprint code that we're writing for our AI. There is a lot of it and I do understand that. So if you are having any issues, feel free to just go back, watch the video again, take things nice and slow if you do have any issues and everything will work. Also, don't forget the completed project files are also available on Patreon. So what we're going to do is go ahead and press play one last time to make sure this is all working. So we've got our AI over here, it's roaming, 
it chases us, and then if I let it explode on me, give it a couple of seconds, it's going to take away our health and it's gone all the way down. With this, I set the health to minus 25. You don't want to do that. You want to set this to minus 0.3, but you can see that it is damaging us and you can see it's doing what we need it to. Anyway, guys, that is everything for this video. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.